The Manchester City scandal, which has seen the club banned from the Champions League for two years, is arguably just the tip of the iceberg. The truth is, English and European football is riddled with clubs breaking the financial rules to some extent. In England, at least three championship sides are being investigated for financial misdemeanours, and in recent years, many Premier League clubs have broken the rules to attract young players. The problem is, there's no effective regulator of English football. The FA isn't. It needs the big clubs to support both the England team and the FA Cup if it is to thrive financially. So how can it also regulate them? Both the Premier League and the Football League are supposed to apply a fit and proper person test to those buying football clubs, yet both are remarkably ineffective at doing so. The Premier League is basically 20 separate businesses coming together to sell their exclusive television rights. That's a cartel by any other name, and cartels need regulating. As a former chairman of the FA, I think it's time for government to intervene and establish a powerful, independent regulator for professional football in England. Hang on, you've been, you've been director general of the BBC, chairman of the FA. Yeah. What else have you got under your oh, I've had done a lot of jobs. Yeah. I didn't last very long at any of them. But, uh... <laughs> right, let me explain for our viewers what regulation in football currently exists, mm -hmm. just so we know we're all on the level Are we going to drop off with this or not? <laughs> I think I might just go off here. Give me a second, Carol. So um, UEFA has what they call financial fair play. It was introduced by UEFA in 2009 uh, to address clubs making huge losses and spending beyond their means. Losses are limited to a level set by UEFA. Then in the Premier League, uh, they have a number of financial rules in place, including requirements for clubs to pay transfer fees, salaries and tax bills on time, and they must submit accounts annually and disclose payments made to agents. And then finally, the English Football League that you mentioned, Greg, introduced profit and sustainability rules for the 2011-12 to 12 season, <coughs> limiting the losses that can be made by clubs to £39 million over a three-year period if those losses are covered by an owner. So those are the rules in place. Yes. Now, the, I, the one, imagines, <coughs> one imagines the reason these rules are in place is to stifle and to stop unfair competition. So perhaps in a scenario I present to you, you can tell us how it would work. If a foreign country like, say, Qatar or whoever, comes in to buy a club, how does an individual owner of a club, like an individual millionaire, compete against a state that has petrodollars and can keep buying the best well, players? Well, that like, was the aim is of... Is that fair? That was the aim of financial first pl fair play in the first place. Yeah. It, was, it was introduced to say, hang on, uh, mm. Abramovich has bought Chelsea and poured money into it and there's nothing we can do to stop that, which which actually damages competition yeah. in your domestic And there are also games. question marks over where that money came from, right? Uh, well, there's, there's question marks where a lot of money comes from <laughs> yeah. in football. Um, Can we make it simple in this? Because, I mean, yeah, you I'm lost right. me in the first part of the I intro. thought you weren't going to join in no, this. No, but I am. I, because I, I want to know what Man City actually did wrong. What Manchester City... What, they, what they're saying... Alleged. What they're saying Manchester City did wrong right. was that they claimed that Etihad, the airline, was right. sponsoring the club with a chunk of money... Why is very that large bad? chunk of money. Why is that bad? Because it, it later, they, they would argue, it, they later demonstrated that the money didn't come from Etihad, it actually came from the government. The government, right. well, so, well, can well, I the ask government of Abu Dhabi. Right. So, so, Etihad great, owned by the government? Yes. So if they've, been, if they've been chucked out of this European Champions League, which will be very expensive for them because oh. there's a lot of potential earning money million, they yeah. can earn from the territory, why are they not going to be kicked out of the Premier League? Are the European clubs well, operating by a more draconian set of rules? And if so, why so? Well, well the, Premier, the Premier just League are doing their own. But hang on, well, are they going to be thrown out and why not? Well, that, that's going on at the moment. I but don't, it, is, it isn't. Be, I haven't read be, that the Premier League are going to kick yeah, them out. Yeah, no, no. The Premier League are doing their own investigation based upon. This all came out, and this is, this is the problem with the whole thing. This all came out by a leak to Dear Spiegel in Germany. Mm -hmm. And if that, if that leak hadn't happened, none of this would have happened. Wow. wow. Can I read their statement? So this is what the club had to say. Manchester City is disappointed but not surprised by today's announcement. In December 2018, the UEFA chief investigator publicly previewed the outcome and sanction he intended to be delivered to Manchester City before any investigation had even begun. The subsequent flawed and consistently leaked UEFA process he oversaw has meant that there was little doubt in the result that he would deliver. Simply put, this is a case initiated by UEFA, prosecuted by UEFA, and judged by UEFA. Ooh, harsh. Can, yeah. can, the, the Premier that, that's, League... That's a fair... 
that's a fair statement. That's what they're saying. Supposed to judge it. Well, that's why I'm saying you need. That's why I would have. In, I mean, the FA is supposed to judge it in in the in England, right? Right. It's, I don't think the FA has the capability to do that. But secondly, the FA needs the big clubs to supply players for the England team mm. and to, for them to play so the FA. Right, can I blind ask either? you a question? Are they turning mm. a blind eye? I don't eye? think they're equipped to actually do a proper investigation. So would you be saying this if you were still chairman of the FA? Did you say similar things I when say, you were chairman? I did chairman? say similar things when or I was chairman. Or is it chairman? easier to say it now you're no longer there? Well, no, I did say similar things when I was chairman and wasn't particularly liked. <laughs> That's why you um, let us feel like your time at <laughs> <in> the BBC. <laughs> yes, yes. No, I was liked at the BBC. Just, he was loved at the BBC. No, but then they sacked him. It contributed apparently 3.3 billion to the Treasury in 2016-17. If it's doing that, what does it matter where the money's coming from? Well, you don't well, want corruption. Yeah, it does. Is it corruption Do if you, it's coming well, from? They have decided on a set of. You could have said, no, we're not going to have financial fair play Ooh. at all. Anyone can put any sort of money into any sort of club and spend a fortune. The, the clubs chose that wasn't the case. It's not what they wanted to do. Right. And therefore, they introduced financial fair play. I mean, there are all sorts of ways around it, and I suspect Manchester City are not alone in getting around it. This is like a Q&A. OK, so, but why do we need a regu regulatory body? They've been fined 25 million quid, they're going to be banned for two years, they're going to lose all well, sorts of business. Well, you're less why do we to need do the body? It if there is a body? Well, I'm, I'm saying that the body... I, I, I think you need a regulator of English football to start mm. with. How you do Europeans, harder. But the same people who organise competitions... Right. Are also the regulator, and that doesn't make sense. But don't because you think? They want these clubs but don't you think the real issue is that the clubs are overspending and overstretched anyway? So there's yeah. a statement here that says Championship clubs had pre-tax losses of 307 million between 2017 and 18, and that's a record well, high, isn't that? Because they're well, overpaying the, really, the players. Oh, everybody's overpaying scene. the players. Everybody's, but everybody's over. But the only consensus across football is they all hate. Agents. <laughs> Everybody hates agents because the agents take vast sums of money out of football. Well, it just disappears. Speaking of agents, I'm going to take over. Does that work? <laughs> Not really. Anyway, it's time to bring this conversation to a close. Coming up after the break, why the Brits aren't doing it for the girls. <laughs>